All right, on Monday for science, we're gonna be talking about data and graphs. Those really are two different sheets of paper. And on the data, we want tables or a table. And for graphs, oops, we would just want actual graphs or a graph. Now for the data table, you want to figure out some sort of grid or something that's easy for you to tally things down on and easy for you to then interpret and put on the graph. So if you think about the one that I was looking at with the raisin boxes or the boxes of, of raisin brand type cereal, if I had Kellogg's versus X brand, Y brand, and Z brand, I might make a table that looks like this and I repeated my experiment five times, and this sounds a little expensive here. Uh, uh, let's see, box one, box two, box three, box four, box five, and let's say the average here, okay? Am I off the screen there? I think I am. Okay, so box one, two, three, four, five, and average. And in the Kellogg's box, I counted 40, raisins and then 60 and then 50 and then 51 and then uh, 49 and for an average of 50 we'll say for x i had 30 and 32 and 31 and 12 and then 35 for an average of, i don't know we'll just guess 28 and so on and so forth and this is the table now, if you want to keep it as a handwritten table and include that in your science fair packet, that's great. Uh, scientists love the handwritten stuff. But then see if you can make it into a Word document, a page of its own in Word document form and create a nice table that's easy to see. But, but if, you, if you want to keep your actual handwritten one in, they love that. Go ahead and keep that in so you kind of have two versions of your data. Then for the graph, we learned how to do graphs on Excel. And you gotta choose whether or not it's gonna be a line graph or a bar graph, okay? With this one, since it's amounts, we're just comparing amounts, that would be a bar graph. If it was trends over time, like uh, the growth of, I don't know, weeds or something like that, that would be a line graph. Um, so you have to determine which one it is, a bar graph or a line graph. In my case, it's a, it's a bar graph. And I'm just gonna take the averages, so on the end there, and plug them into my graph. Now this, you will have a handwritten graph, but it won't be on here. What we want the handwritten graph to be is a nice big one uh, on, your, on your, um, your display board, but don't worry about that one yet. See if you could do one on Excel at home and print one out. So in this case, I, mine might go up and down this way, and here's my Kellogg's, and here's my X, my Y, my Z brand, and Kellogg's was this much, and then for the average, and X was this much, and Y was this much, and Z was this much, and that kind of thing. See if you can make sure you get uh, heading on it, make sure you get labels over here, mine would be number of raisins. Uh, over here, brands, um, just make sure you can label them all and you can either hand color them or if you have color printer that'd be great uh, Otherwise shading would be fine as well. Okay, so those two things work on today the data Make sure you have a table and that you plug it into the graphs. Okay